So next, what I would like to focus on is uh, some applications from my own research. So I work in applied machine learning, and uh, my inspiration for providing these examples is for you to be able to understand what I do in a bit more detail in my research and how that relates to this module. And it's meant to be an inspiration for you to, uh, to identify similar problems in your areas of interest. And uh, perhaps even we can have a discussion on that at some point. So uh, most of the machine learning work that I do, as I said earlier, is applied in nature, and it spans, I've, I've experienced in a variety of different areas. So just to give, give an example of something that I developed, or I was part of the team that developed, uh, and it has been used, to, used in practice as well, is hurricane intensity prediction. So hurricanes are a big problem in the US. We work with the National Hurricane Center to design a machine learning model that can predict hurricane intensity, which is the wind speed or the maximum sustained wind speed within a hurricane. So hurricanes are, are massive storms. Uh, this is on your screen, you can see the size of, the, of one of the largest cyclones or, or cyclones or hurricanes as, as they're called, uh, can, be, can be pretty big. Uh, so we want, what we want to identify is what's the, what's the expected maximum sustained wind speed in a hurricane, and, and these wind speeds can be pretty high in about 140 or 150 knots even. So uh, the way they, it's conventionally done is that uh, the National Hurricane Center uh, maintains a set of specialized planes that fly through the hurricane. It's not dangerous at all when the hurricane is at sea because there is no debris in it. And the, the aeroplane has uh, specific sensors on it that allow it to measure wind speed within the hurricane itself. Now that uh, has some uh, cost associated with it together with the risk. So, and we want to minimize that. So that's the, that's the bigger picture of why we wanted to develop this. And uh, the data that we had came from satellites like the GO satellite that is pictured on your screen. And these satellites observe the Earth uh, from space, and they can take infrared measurements of hurricanes, much like the images that you see in the top right corner. So what we wanted to do is, based on historical data that had been collected through these hurricane hunter planes that had flown through the hurricane and collected uh, valuable data points of hurricane intensity, and we wanted to see whether we could predict uh, the hurricane intensity based on infrared images that had been captured by satellites. So what we did is uh, developed a machine learning model, much like what we are going to discuss in this module. And uh, first it was a conventional machine learning model, and then we designed uh, a specialized deep learning model called Deep Fury uh, as well for this purpose that is able to predict with sufficient accuracy. It's currently the state of the art model for this purpose. And it can identify, it can, it can predict the speed in knots or the maximum wind speed in knots in, in a given hurricane. So it, it was used to predict, uh, to generate predictions for hurricanes that it had never seen before and it was able to do a pretty good job on that as well. So that's something uh, that I'd worked on. If you want, if you're interested in exploring this further, you can find the links for this research on my webpage as well as on your screen at the bottom. Another thing is, is, is completely different. One thing that one of my students worked on is the development of, of a journal recommendation system. So when we are publishing papers, uh, students uh, or researchers, they want to feel or they want to identify what journal would be the most appropriate for their research. So we designed a system to do that. We designed a journal recommendation system in which you paste the abstract and the title of your paper and then it generates uh, what's the most appropriate journal for that. So that's something uh, for which the manuscript is under preparation, but uh, it's, uh, you can find a link to this on my, on my web, web server. So, so these two applications are uh, a bit atypical. This is not something that I do in routine. Most of my research is uh, focused on bioinformatics uh, the applications of machine learning in bioinformatics and in computational pathology. And on your screen, you see a quote by Donald Knuth, uh, which says, I can't be as confident about computer science as I can be about biology. Biology easily has 500 years of exciting problems to work on. It's at that level. And 
some of those problem, problems, actually a lot of those problems require computational solutions. So that's where I work on at the interface of biology, medicine, and machine learning. So that's where most of my research is. Just to give some specific examples, uh, the, this is again, this is not my research, but uh, machine learning has been used recently in the analysis of data from COVID-19 patients in uh, predicting whether a particular patient what are the odds of survival for a given patient based on their x-rays? It has been used to identify based on cuff patterns and saliva patterns, uh, how a particular, whether a particular patient is COVID positive or not. Similarly, there has been a test designed at Warwick that, that uses deep learning models to identify, uh, identify whether someone is, is positive, positive or negative using image processing techniques. Similarly, there's a lot of bioinformatics work that, that analyzes how protein-protein interactions affect COVID-19 uh, uh, infections and so on. So, it, so machine learning has played a good role, a good uh, a role at a good level in the recent pandemic. And I welcome you to explore papers on this in your own time and try to gain an understanding of how machine learning can be applied in, in similar areas or in related areas. Most of my research, I started off working on um, machine learning for ECG classification. On your screen, you can see ECGs, uh, electrocardiograms from different patients. And what we wanted to do is to identify whether their heart rhythm was normal or not normal, something that's uh, readily available these days in an Apple Watch, I have been told. I have not used that myself, but I think it has something that analyzes cardiac rhythms as well. So this is something that I started off with, and what we were given is uh, a data set of patients together with elect their electrocardiograms, uh, and we wanted to develop a machine learning model so that it could predict whether, whether, whether uh, an electrocardiogram is normal or abnormal, whether it has normal rhythm or abnormal rhythm. So that's what we worked on. It was, it was, a, it was a pretty good uh, system for that. I've also worked on ultrasound image analysis. What you see on your screen is an ultrasound of a human liver that has a particular disease called the fatty liver disorder. So we developed a machine learning model together with uh, ultrasound experts and radiologists that allows us to identify uh, in a given image what part of the image has fat accumulation in it and to what degree. So it could uh, identify whether the liver was fatty and uh, it could help uh, medical experts make that diagnosis in a completely automated manner. So you, you give it a ultrasound and then it would, it would generate a prediction for whether that ultrasound is a fatty liver, has a fatty liver disorder or not. So that's another application of machine learning. For my PhD research, what I worked on is protein-protein uh, uh, interaction analysis. Now what that means, I'll ask you to pay attention to my hands rather than the screen. Let's say, so every cell in our body, as I've uh, started off in this lecture, has DNA. However, that DNA leads to the generation of proteins like insulin and like, uh, like hemoglobin that actually go ahead and perform different functions in your body. And biologists are interested in how these proteins interact with one another, much like workers in a, in a factory. If you think of the human body as a factory, then you would then proteins would be the workers in it. They do everything in your body. They give structure to your body. They perform a lot of different functions. So for example, hemoglobin is a protein that is responsible for the transfer of oxygen from one place to another. So what, they are, what biologists are interested in is identifying what part of one protein, let's say if this is one protein, and another protein, how do these two parts fit together? So specialized cameras uh, like electric uh, like uh, X-ray, uh, X-ray-based structure determination, as well as electron microscopy, is used to determine protein structures. But what we want to do is to identify using machine learning how two different proteins fit together, much like two Lego pieces. So that's what I worked on, and uh, we developed some machine learning techniques, which are mentioned over here for this purpose. And we use these techniques in practice uh, to identify novel protein interactions of how viruses attack a very important cash crop in Pakistan, uh, uh, that is cotton. And we were able to identify those proteins in the cotton leaf curl virus 
and how they interact with different proteins in the cotton uh, in the cotton plant, and that can lead to then uh, development of of specialized therapeutics that can stop that interaction from happening. Just to put that in perspective, if you think of the recent COVID pandemic, then what happens is the way the virus infects humans is it has certain proteins, which is called a spike protein. And so let's say, imagine this is a virus, then, then the spike protein from the virus binds to the human ACE2 protein. So these two interact with each other. And that's how your virus infects humans. If by any means we are able to block this interface, then this interaction would not take place. So we won't be affected by viruses. So these machine learning methods that we developed in our lab can be used for this purpose as well for uh, identifying how two different proteins interact with each other, what part of one protein interacts with what part of the other protein. So you're uh, welcome to follow up. And if you have any questions on that, I'd welcome them. Recently, I worked with uh, one of the one of the leading scientists, uh, Dr. Jennifer Dubna, who got this year's Nobel Prize in chemistry for her work on CRISPR proteins. So CRISPR is a is a biological system that allows us to edit DNA in live cells. So it, it's a, it's a biochemical assay that can change DNA in live cells. And imagine if we have that ability, then we can cure so many so many genetic disorders and develop so many new therapies. However, one of the problems with CRISPR is that it can also edit a part of the DNA for which it is not in intended. So it can have off-target effects. And what we need is a protein that can stop CRISPR from editing uh, once we have had the target effect. So once we have had CRISPR to edit the part of the DNA that we want to edit, we want to then clump CRISPR or stop CRISPR so there's, uh, what we developed is a machine learning model uh, that allows us to identify proteins that can go ahead and stop CRISPR. So if you want to learn about that further or about CRISPR, which is a really great upcoming technology in biology, I welcome you to explore this book that is on your screen. It's written by Jennifer Dubna. It's called A Crack in Creation. It's, it's a pretty simple read, and I would really welcome you to, to read that. And if you're interested further in our work, you can follow our paper on, on the subject. But what we essentially did is uh, developed a machine learning model based on previous known proteins that are known to stop CRISPR. And that machine learning model is, is then able to generate predictions for a novel test protein. And I'll be posting a link to a, to a detailed talk on the subject that I gave elsewhere. So you're welcome to follow that as well. Uh, currently, I'm engaged at Warwick in the PATH Lake Consortium, so it stands for Pathology, Data Lake, Analytics, Knowledge, and Education, which is uh, about a $15 million, uh, dollar, million pound grant. And the objective of this is to accelerate or to develop artificial intelligence for cancer diagnosis in pathology. Now, just to give some perspective, Cancer is, is a prevalent disease. There's a lot of people who unfortunately are diagnosed with cancer, but the number of people that are diagnosed with cancer, that's, that's increasing because we're getting better at diagnosing cancer at the earlier stage. That means there's more and more impact of that on, uh, on pathologists whose job it is to identify cancer. And the way they do that is, for example, if someone is suspected to have uh, cancer in their breast, then a part of the breast tissue is removed and uh, that part of the breast tissue is then examined under a microscope. And then that is digitized, so we get a, get a pretty big image. These images are about 100,000 pixels by 100,000 pixels. So these are really big images and we can see individual cells in those images. So what pathologists do is they look at those cells and then they want to diagnose whether a particular patient has cancer or they don't have cancer, what's their likelihood of survival and how, what type of therapy they're, they're gonna be given. So all sort of uh, diagnostic and prognostic decisions are based on pathology, which is a gold standard for diagnosis in clinical practice. And what we want to do is to use deep learning and to use machine learning to try to automate this process so that we can uh, help pathologists diagnose better and take better care of their cancer patients. 
So that's the goal of the Pathlight project. Uh, and why we want to do it is, of course, there's a shortage of pathologists. So there are other issues. Uh, two different pathologists can look at the same image and come with very different conclusions. So there is an inter-observer variability, and then there is subjectivity that is, uh, that is problematic. Another issue is how many, let's say, if someone asks you, asks the pathologist, how many cancer cells are there in this image? It's really hard for them to count all of them. Much like uh, I would be, it would be really hard for me to count how many people are in a big room, uh, let's say in a big ballroom. Uh, it would be really hard for me to count because humans are, we're good at classifying things, not so much as quantifying things. So let me ask you this. So if I ask you the question, how much fat do you see in this? So fat is these tiny white bubbles that you see. Let me show you. So if you take a look at this particular bit, this is a part of a tissue that has been scanned from a patient. If you take a take a look at this, so the white portions that you see within these, these are these are fat areas. And if I ask you the question, how much fat there is, it would be really hard to quantify. But for machine learning models and for image analysis models, this is a really simple task. So they can tell you that 45.9% of all of this tissue is fat. So that's why you want to design machine learning models because they offer better quantification. They don't have those subjective and inter-observer biases that plague pathologists and they're efficient. So that's what we are doing in, in, in Pathlake. So just like I showed you some examples of uh, faces that are of people that didn't exist and those were generated by artificial intelligence systems, on your screen, what you see is a, is a pathology image that doesn't exist in practice, but has been generated by one of my students using an AI algorithm that can generate images like this one. Uh, most of my research uh, that I work on in pathology images is based on graph neural networks. So we want to model these big images as graphs, much like this one, and then use specialized type of neural networks called graph neural networks to generate predictions for computational pathology. And if you are interested in learning more about this, please get in touch with me. I posted a list of projects uh, on, uh, the, on the recent project invitations, and there are some projects related to pathology in machine learning, and there are some projects related to uh, bioinformatics in machine learning. So if you are interested in that, please take a look and get in touch with me. Thank you.